What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown, and today we are looking at the absolutely fantastic performance of gold and silver recently, talking about some of the drivers of that performance that we've seen and what we might expect over the next couple of weeks, couple of months moving forward now that we're here. Let's dive in. It's been a long time coming for those of us who have been storing up physical precious metals, gold and silver, for some time now. Those of us who have looked out at the economy and seen, hey, we know what's going to happen here. And so it's just been a matter of patience, a matter of waiting it out. And now it's finally starting to look like we're seeing some of that performance that uh, a lot of us have been waiting for for a long time. I'm recording this video on Friday, July 24th, and the gold price topped out today right around $1,900 per ounce US dollars. And so we are right up there at that all-time high number. Now, five weeks ago, I made a video specifically about gold and how it looked like it was going to take about six weeks to hit this $1,900 mark. It took about five weeks. And I will link that video in the description below if you want to go check that out. But ultimately, the drivers behind this rally has been largely uh, technical from a, a perspective of there was a big rally with a sell-off and then a consolidation phase that built a lot of energy that uh, had you know some momentum then that sprang it upwards uh, alongside the fundamental reasons which was a large number of bullion banks and trading desks were very 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 short gold and so having to close out all of those short contracts is buying pressure that has driven the price up as well now in addition to the short contracts right now we are seeing a lot of institutional investors standing for delivery on the other side of those futures contracts and so with the uh financial system the way it is right now and institutional investors starting slowly to shift tiny bits of their portfolios over to an allocation in gold. They are looking for physical allocation and so they're looking for standing for delivery on these. And so that will uh, continue to be a driving factor behind the price of gold continuing to go up over the next couple of months. But I would not be surprised to see a little bit of a sell-off here. We've seen it over and over. Anytime there's a natural resistance distance point in the price of gold or silver, the traders are going to use that as an opportunity to try and make a sell-off happen so that they can get back on their feet a little. They've been caught short for months now, and every time they try and close out, it's been driving the price up higher and higher. And so whenever they can, they're going to take that opportunity to load up more on shorts to drive that price down lower so they can close those shorts back out at a little bit less of a painful price. And so we might blow past this $1,900 mark and just continue a rally up into the vacuum of space, but I would not be surprised at all to see a retest back at that $1,800 level where we were building support before and start to build a new range here in between the $1,800 and $1,900 mark before we ultimately then explode into the stratosphere with the price of gold. Now, silver, on the other hand, silver has seen in the last couple of months, literally the best performance performance in 40 years in terms of how fast and how much the price of silver has moved. And we have consolidated above the $21 per ounce mark, which has been previous support and resistance. And so uh, we're looking like we're holding strong here. And so I expect this rally in silver to continue up to that $25 mark. And about two months ago, I made a video about my price targets for certain sectors uh, for three months. So we've got one month left uh, to hit those price targets that I made for gold, silver, the market, bonds, the dollar. The dollar already broke down below 95, which was my uh, price target for the dollar. It looks like we're headed down to 93 now. Uh, and then silver, I put that price target at uh, at 25 to 26 because that's when we uh, start to see a lot of price resistance there. And so we really have a volume vacuum in between where we were with silver and uh, up to that $25, $26 per ounce. And so I would expect to see this rally continue there because we don't really have any natural selling points there. Now we are seeing a lot of uh, fundamental reasons behind the rally in silver as well. Primarily the discrepancies between supply and demand right now. We've seen a sharp tightening of supply on the silver side and a spike in demand over the last couple of months. And so that is one of the main uh, reasons driving silver higher as well. 
Now, I talked about this before on this channel over and over again, but I do not put a lot of weight on the gold to silver ratio, largely because for a very long time when the gold to silver ratio was about 15, where you needed 15 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold, that was held there by law. It wasn't a natural ratio. And as soon as that law broke and the, the prices were allowed to free float against each other, you saw that ratio explode and shoot up to about the 40 to 50 ounce range. And so, yes, the current ratio of, you know, where we've been seeing over the last, you know, even the last year or so around 80, 90, 100 and 100 plus ounces of silver to get one ounce of gold, that is historically elevated, but I'm not putting too much weight on seeing that ratio fall back to numbers that we've seen in the past, even to that 50, 40, 30 range, because the monetary usefulness of silver has been on the decline for centuries. It's been losing its monetary usefulness for a long time. And so we're not seeing the price of silver being very low today, strictly due to manipulation or schemes or things like that. A lot of it has been due to the fact that it has shifted largely from a monetary metal over to an industrial metal. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think we still don't have a lot of uh, room to go up with silver. I think we do, but there is a higher risk with that higher potential reward. And that comes from the monetary usefulness being on the decline in silver strictly because of technology. The, the monetary usefulness of silver for a long time was tied to the fact that it was used as change for gold because the value of silver was lower than the value of gold. And so you would use silver to make change for gold, similar to how today you use coins metal to make change for dollars which have a higher value uh, per you know per volume per space and so that was what silver was used for but with technology and the fact that today you can buy and sell silver and gold and metals in amounts that are just tiny fractions of an ounce one dollar two dollars ten dollars at a time the monetary usefulness of using silver as a monetary metal has been on the decline because of uh, technologies like that now all commodities all metals, industrial metals and precious metals are on the rise just due to inflation. And so you're going to have some inflation protection there. But for me, my majority of my allocation to precious metals in terms of my savings, my hedge, my insurance, my money, my reserves, that's largely gold. Now, like I said, two months ago, I made a video about my price targets for the next three months from that date. So we have one month left on that. And so at the end, in about one month here, I'm gonna make an update to that to see which targets I hit, which targets I missed, and what it looks like for the uh, the rest of the year. As of right now, I hit gold already at 1900. We're still waiting on silver. I had no strong opinions about Bitcoin and it hasn't moved really at all since then. My bond target has been accurate, which was basically no move on bonds. They haven't moved much. The dollar has already hit and it broke past that 95 on the uh, the dollar index. And so it looks like we're on our way down to 93. And then the markets haven't yet hit my target. I still project that we're gonna hit that $3,400 mark on uh, the S&P 500. Within the next month, we've been ticking higher, ticking higher, ticking higher with just a tad bit of volatility here and there. Regardless of any bad news that has come out, the market, the buying pressure has sustained it and the market has continued to just drip a little bit higher and higher. I don't think that has anything to do with the economy. I think the fundamentals of the economy are crumbling beneath the markets right now and we're gonna see some massive damage that is very long-term and very long-lasting and deep damage to the real economy but the markets are poised to continue to move higher. And the longer they do what they're doing right now, the more that melt up phase that will come afterwards seems like it will be strong. And so I do think after we hit that, we'll have some sort of a melt up, some sort of a FOMO rally that happens uh, after, you know, after our, my price target of that 3,400 within the next month. After that, I think we'll see a melt up. And lastly, I'm in the middle of a four part series right now on how to position yourself to successfully transition through a currency reset. And so we're talking about that in a four part series right now. The second part I posted a couple of days ago, it is thick, it is dense. We moved 
fast. So if you haven't watched that already, go back and watch that because that one's talking about how to deal with your investments outside of your retirement. There's a lot of information in that video and then upcoming in the next two parts are going to be how to uh, set up your daily transactions with uh, income, expenses, and debt, how to position yourself there for success. And then the last part that we're going to be doing is how to set up sort of an escape plan just in case things get really bad. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithms and I really appreciate you guys. Have a great day.